Hi, this is Wes Fryer, and it is July the 6th, I think, yes, 2011, and we're here at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, and we have been shooting video today, and I'm going to uh, basically, I think, kind of stitch these together uh, to kind of share a little bit of some of the things that we've learned. We just actually saw a video in one of the theaters here that gave us an update. Well, it was a video of a launch and then a live briefing that gave us an update about the space program and the historic launch, which is going to be happening, we hope, on this Friday, July the 8th, of this uh, last space shuttle that will uh, be going into space. Um, they said there's a lot of thunderstorms in Florida right now, so we may not actually get to have the launch on Friday, but this will be the final um, mission that the space shuttle Atlantis is going to have. I think they said over 200 astronauts have flown on Atlantis, and this will only have a crew of four, and it is the first time since 1983 that we have had a crew that's that small. But the reason for that is because of emergency preparedness or uh, the plans that they're having for uh, the case of, of some kind of an emergency if the orbiter is damaged either on its liftoff or when it's actually in space. The astronauts are trained to be able to repair the heat shield, but if the orbiter is damaged beyond its ability to be repaired, the astronauts will have to return via the Apollo Soyuz launch vehicle. So uh, one of the things that I did not know, several different things, is that we have multiple ways of getting to the International Space Station besides the Russian-built um, Soyuz uh, space, uh, space um, or rocket, I guess, or capsule. Um, we also have... Uh, the European Space Agency with a, uh, uh, with a rocket that's capable of sending astronauts and bringing them back. And we have two different companies, commercial companies, that have prototypes of, space, of rockets that are going to be uh, also able to take astronauts to and from the space station. Um, I had heard that the program that we had to go back to the moon, I think it was called, was it Constellation Alexander that was the moon? was uh, completely scrapped and canceled. But one of the things that they have preserved was the Orion uh, rocket and space capsule, which is going to be similar to the kind of um, capsule that went in the Apollo missions, except it will probably take four or five astronauts instead of just three. And so NASA is hopeful that that particular orbiter is not only going to uh, be the next uh, orbiter that will be helping us resupply the International Space Station, which they said they hope we continue to uh, resupply for another nine years at least until 2020, but also an orbiter that may be able to take us into deep space. And the goal of going to Mars and having human beings go to Mars is still alive, and NASA is hoping to um, continue that push. So it definitely is kind of weird being here thinking that we're about to have the last shuttle launch and being in a climate of cutbacks where NASA, along with many other parts of our government, are facing a lot of severe cutbacks. Obviously, we have to, um, well, it's not obvious, but we need to be spending, you know, less than we, we take in so that we can pay off our debt and uh, take care of the obligations that we have as a nation. But I think it's very important that we continue our space program, not only because of the inventions and things that are spinoffs from the space program. Someone said today that every dollar that's invested in the space program, they said, leads to eight and a half dollars back because of innovations that come, um, but also because um, a lot of our future as a people, as, as a human race, lies beyond the atmosphere of our planet and lies out into space. Who knows what kinds of discoveries await us um, and may have already been discovered but just not, you know, well distributed. And, and today with our ability to interconnect and share knowledge, it really is amazing how quickly things are changing and the pace of innovation. And so I'm really excited to have had, have had this opportunity to learn here in Houston. And if you ever have an opportunity to come to Houston, definitely take advantage of the Johnson Space Center and the programs that they have. Last thing that I'll say is we didn't take advantage of this, but in addition to the regular tours that you can do, they they have a special sort of behind the scenes tour. I think it costs $80 a person, but you have to be 14 years old or older. And we don't have any kids in our family that old yet, but we will soon. And so I'm hopeful that we'll be able to return here to Houston at some point and be able to do that behind the scenes tour, which I think lasts about four or five hours at the Johnson Space Center. So here's a little bit more footage from our day here in Houston. 
Hi, I'm Rachel, and we're here at um, the NASA Museum in Houston, Texas. And this is like you can touch the moon, and, like you touch it with your hands. Like, like this is like really, really, really old, and like you can touch it, and it's from the moon. So we got this on the moon from an astronaut. Hi, I'm Rachel, and we're still at the NASA, NASA place, and this is lunar soil from the moon. There are more rocks and soil um, on the moon than anywhere else in our entire world, and it's pretty cool, I think. Hi, this is Wes Fryer, and it's July the 6th, 2011. We are here in Houston, Texas at the Johnson Space Center, and we have the Saturn V rocket right behind us, which was the rocket that took all of our Apollo astronauts into space and also the Skylab missions. The sign said that this rocket, and Alexander, you can pan up and kind of see it, actually was only powered for two and a half minutes during the launch, and there were five of these, I think, J-1 rocket engines that were powering the first stage of the rocket. After the first stage, um, this fell away to the Earth, and a second uh, stage started that had a J-2 rocket. So, Rachel, we were just in the original mission control, and uh, you had a question that you asked one of the, the people that was there. you remember what that was and what they told you? Well... I had a question, and I asked how many people have walked on the moon, and there are only 12 people in six missions. So that was a, um, the mission control room where they controlled all of our Apollo missions, and um, they didn't say Mercury, so they must have switched over. And um, what, do you remember anything else about what happened in that room or what was special about it? Um, I think. Queen Elizabeth sat in one certain seat, and one and one little boy had to wave. Yep, and there was a boy sitting in the same seat. So all of our presidents, except President Obama, have been to that mission control room. And right underneath where we were, they were controlling the current mission, which is going to launch on Friday in two days. So it'll be our last space shuttle mission. And there's another room in there for the International Space Station. So we'll do some more reports here from the Johnson Space Center as we are exploring it today.